So we met at a job. Uh, we were co-workers at this job. When we were, I was 17 at the time, she was 16. The first day I ever saw her walk into that job, I felt my heart sink into my stomach in a way that I had never felt to that point and I've never felt since. It was something almost supernatural about just the first time I ever laid eyes on her. And I would never say I believe in love and first sight, but it was, but it was more of like, I know that this person is going to be important to me at first sight. Well, I was a, first a friend to her, and once I realized I had feelings for her, I told her, because I wasn't one to wait around and just see how everything played out. I was like, look, I f this is the way I feel about you. Is there hope for us? And she told me off the bat, there's no hope for us, and that was it. Junior year of high school, Rose met a boy with hair longer than hers, and he was so sweet, and they had the same taste in music, and had so much, so many things in common. Rose totally didn't like him. They were just friends, nothing was ever gonna happen. There was a time in my life where I was a man who stood at the end of a dock, reaching for a green light that seemed so profoundly intangible. That glimmer of hope, that green light that shone ceaselessly in the night did more than guide me home. It gave me a sense of purpose and self-worth. The last eight years of my life have been spent fulfilling that purpose. Do you want to know what I wish for every time we acknowledged the clock read 1111? This. I wished for this day. I wished to be fully enveloped in the warm capacity green light of your love. I feel alive when I'm with her because she is in a lot of ways an extrovert and I'm not. I'm an introvert. She is so high energy and I need that. She pulls it out of me in ways that I couldn't reach it myself. And her personality is so dynamic. If you ever have a conversation with her, it borders on over the top, I think, sometimes. She's very excited. Her energy just lights up a room. Rose, there's a lot to say. I think your name really does describe your personality. You're very precious. From the moment that we met you, uh, I truly believe that you came family. right off the bat, I love, you know, similar taste in bands and genres. And I knew she played guitar, so it kind of just grew from there. I asked her if she wanted, she wanted to play in my band, and which she did. So we just grew closer as friends at that time through the band, through music. I was persistent in that I stayed a friend to her, and we kind of fell for each other while we were friends. I was a friend to her in a way that no one else could be. I think being there for somebody when they have nobody else is something that people appreciate on a very deep emotional level. And I think pursuing her was never a matter of pursuing as it was supporting. And I think our relationship is so successful because it's based on support. We're more than just friends, we're more than just lovers. We are partners in a lot of ways, and I think that's the difference. I love you more than words can adequately express. 
I love you with a love that springs from both the deepest part of my being, from the essence of my soul. If I could live a hundred more lifetimes with you, it still wouldn't be enough. To love you is to live, and to live is to love you. I will love you from this day until my last, with an ineffable amount of love. Patrick. Dear friend, it is with tears in my eyes that I sit here and write the most heartfelt I love you that I have ever written. Thank you for never believing that there was no hope. There is always hope. I want to say that I know, but I, I don't know if I know what I'll think when she's walking up the aisle. We had rehearsal yesterday and I fought very hard to hold back the tears. I don't think I'll be able to today. When she's walking up that aisle, I think that is an image that will be burned into my mind for the rest of my life. Pretty excited about this, aren't you? Traditionally, I am yours to have and to hold. And while I will always have you to hold my bitter, cold blooded self, I will forever be beside you to tell you that you're not dying, but you're actually just stressed out. I vow to still love you even if you have to switch to decaf to calm your anxiety. I promise to not freak out when you bring home instruments that take up the whole living room. <laughs> to sing ridiculous improvised songs with during long car rides to nowhere. And to be your very best pal. <laughs> I promise to keep you warm when you are cold. And that's a, that's a huge responsibility <laughs> because that's always. I promise to never stop romancing you and comparing your inner and your outer beauty to some of the most extraordinary things this earth has to offer. I promise that I will never stop being your friend and I promise to love you the way you deserve to be loved, unconditionally, passionately, and infinitely. Patrick, will you repeat after me this solemn covenant? I, Patrick. I, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> May kiss your bride. watching you cry because <laughs> that was so sincere. No, it wasn't a fake tip. Oh, great. You're so good at that. I know. I think Boogie is going to be. I know. Definitely up there. Yeah. Yeah. That was my second favorite <laughs> Giggling? part. Giggling? Yeah, laughing Giggling like the whole time. crazy people. <laughs> short period of time that I've been on this earth, uh, but I would say that I've learned one thing in this life, and that is to take nothing for granted and to constantly give love. When times get tight, you give love. When money is tight, you give love. Above all else, when you really just don't feel like it, 
you have to give love. Look at this beautiful couple up here. And, and my advice to, to everyone in this room is, is truly take nothing for granted and uh, never miss an opportunity to, to give love. So to Patrick and Rose, raise your glass. Here's to you. God bless. And uh, let's bless them on the next step of their journey. Give love.